I'm Jamie Costell with your WMAR 2 News update. A denied protective order in a Howard County court hearing could have been the difference between life and death when a couple was murdered and their son shot back in May. We are putting this tragedy in focus. WMAR 2 News, Kendall Green unpacks the hearing and explains how that order, if granted, could have saved lives. What happened around 930 on May 10th within the walls of this home completely changed the lives of a young family forever. Upon arrival, uh, officers located three adult victims deceased and an additional victim that was transported uh, to an area hospital. Sean Price was the man behind the gun who murdered a young couple, Ryan and Iviana Lee, who had their whole lives ahead of them. That night, Price traveled to the couple's home and attacked them, along with their 10-year-old son, enraged by Ryan's mother, Jamie Honeycutt, then turned the gun on himself, something he allegedly threatened to do before. I made a report in the courts about this person. He had said he would kill me. That's, that's all she said. Court records show Jamie Honeycutt appeared in court five separate times. The first on October 14th in 2020 for a temporary protective order. In the petition, she alleged just the day before filing, Price threatened to kill her and strangled her, traveling an hour and a half to do it. She stated in the past, he threw dishes at her and put a gun to her head. Two weeks later though, on October 21st, she requested to dismiss that order. For some clients, they, they make a move and then realize that they're in more danger now and, and, ha and decide to retreat from it. After representing hundreds of abuse victims, Dorothy Linick, the director of the legal clinic at the House of Ruth, says that's not uncommon. She tells us the details of Jamie Honeycutt's case reveal a chronically abusive relationship with Sean Price, with red flags written all over it. Strangulation is a high lethality factor. Having a gun is a high lethality factor. These are things that, if you look at the research, show that he is much more likely to kill her than some of the other kinds of violence. A week after requesting the dismissal, Honeycutt will file for two more temporary protective orders that were granted. Howard County District Judge Lisa Broden ordered Price not to abuse or contact Honeycutt, even forcing him to surrender his guns. But a ruling and a final hearing on November 17th created a different story. I just want to be able to get my stuff and be protected so he cannot harass me or come to where I am and kill me. You can hear Honeycutt tell Judge Broden she feared for her life repeatedly. I can promise you that I will kill anybody that associates themselves with you and I will put a bullet in the head of their family's head. Bringing multiple witnesses to testify in her favor. One of those witnesses, her son, Ryan, who Price would eventually murder. Do you think that I'm scared? Yes. It's the worst thing you can do is when you don't believe her, and then it becomes worse, or she gets killed, or somebody else gets killed. Even after the witnesses and evidence in multiple hearings, Judge Broden this time will deny Honeycutt's final request for a protective order. There's insufficient evidence for me to find that Mr. Price has done anything that would allow me by law to grant this protective order. It's denied. Lennox says as a result of her trauma with Price, Honeycutt, who represented herself in the case, wasn't able to tell her story in a straight line in order to win the judge over. Today I didn't hear anything about strangulation or choking. That is pretty significant. When you read the research on trauma, it talks about the impact on your brain and why a victim might not be able to tell the story in a logical way. Which is why Lennox strongly recommends victims experiencing chronic abuse go into court with representation. Now, Honeycutt's words, written on the side of the petition nearly seven months before that double murder, have a chilling effect. I believe guns should be removed so no one gets hurt. I think the most important thing that you have to do is to take victims of domestic violence seriously. Or in this case, an abuser turned killer will never be punished for leaving the least involved in the most pain. Kendall Green, WMAR2 News. Now, according to Anne Arundel County Domestic Violence Resource Center, one in four women and one in seven men have been victims of domestic violence by an intimate partner in their lifetime. If you or someone you know is a victim of spousal or partner abuse, you're not alone. Contact House of Ruth, the organization's 
24 hour hotline is 410-889-7884. You can also find that number right now on our website. Click with us online for updates on top stories and breaking news, also for news and weather. While you're on the go, download the WMAR2 app in the App Store. You can also watch live radar and get breaking news sent right to your phone. Thanks for watching. I'm Jamie Costello. This WMAR2 news update is sponsored by Jones Junction.